I know most people wait until birthdays and things to make cake, but what's up with that? It is rainy and cold outside, and so what is a better way to spend our time than to bake through the 450 recipes in my favorite cookbook, The Cook's Illustrated Baking Book. That's right, I'm baking everything in this cookbook. Today, we are moving on to fluffy yellow layered cake. I haven't made this one before, but who doesn't like cake? And I'm really excited to eat it. So, I feel like that's all we need to know. So I preheated my oven. I also prepped two nine inch cake pans. I used butter, greased my pan, and then I used cake flour, which is one of our other ingredients, to coat it and I have parchment lining the bottom. It's really important to do that because there are a lot of chemical reactions that happen with baking. So once you have your baking soda and your baking powder in with your mixture, things start happening and you don't wanna leave your batter out for a long time. So you wanna have your pans prepped ahead of time. Believe me, I have forgotten to do that before and it has not gone well. For the cake in this recipe, we need butter, cream of tartar, vanilla, salt, sugar, cake flour, a bowl of eggs, baking powder, baking soda, room temperature buttermilk, and vegetable oil. We have more ingredients that are waiting for us for the frosting, we'll get to that later. Into a large bowl, we are adding cake flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and one and a half cup sugar, okay. I measured this out by weight, and the entire recipe, it seems, needs one and three quarter cups of sugar. My favorite cookbook only gives the weight for that entire amount and not for one and one half cups of sugar. Now, I'm sure that I could somehow use math to figure that out, but that is beyond me at this moment. I'm just gonna measure it. See what I mean? Okay, so, hmm. I weighed out one and three quarter cups, which is supposed to be 12 and a quarter ounces so that I could just like dip it into the bowl because I didn't read the instruction ahead of time. And I just took it all and put it into my measuring cups and that amounted to one and a half cups. All right, I guess we're just gonna have to go with one and a half cups. All right, well, if it's too sweet, we know why. Whisk to combine. Interesting that we are adding the sugar in here because sugar is technically a, a wet ingredient and normally for things like this, you're adding all the dry together and all the wet together and then you're combining, so interesting. Oh. We need melted butter, which means we have to go to my nemesis, the microwave. Actually, what if I just put this in the oven? I mean, the oven's preheating, right? Cut it into little pieces and maybe I can avoid my nemesis altogether. Ha ha ha. Just don't forget about it. The yellow part of yellow cake is the eggs. We need three large eggs separated plus three large yolks. Importantly, these eggs are also at room temperature. All the ingredients when you are baking should be the same temperature. Oh God, the butter. Let's check. Ooh, it's melting like gangbusters. Not there yet though. Medium bowl, egg yolks. Room temperature buttermilk is like really frothy. I think it's good though, it's okay. Buttermilk sometimes looks weird. You just gotta roll with it. Let's see how the butter experiment is working. Oh, it's melted. Three tablespoons vegetable oil and two teaspoons vanilla. Add the butter. It's time to whip up some egg whites. I think this step in general whenever this comes up in recipes can be really intimidating to people who don't bake that much, but it's okay. We're gonna get there together, it'll be fine. We have all the egg whites into the stand mixer. To that we are adding a pinch of cream of tartar. I'm gonna run the stand mixer on medium low till everything starts to get nice and foamy. We're looking for stiff peaks. Let's see if we got them. Mm. Yeah. 
It looked a little fluffy at first, but I, I think we're okay. I think we can move on. See, that was easy. I'm taking the flour mixture, adding it to the bowl. Just gonna give this a whisk. So it's been sitting here. Got this running out low. And now I'm going to slowly add this. Okay, my favorite cookbook is very clear. Ran for 15 seconds, we need to stop now. We need to scrape down the bowl and then continue. Scrape down. Not much scraping that needs, but it said to do it, so we're doing it. Medium low speed until smooth and fully incorporated, 10 to 15 seconds. You count it. It's definitely smooth, it's definitely fully incorporated, so once again, our indicators are what we are paying attention to here. It's time to incorporate the whites into our batter. Starting with one third, eyeballing it, of course. Like that. And I'm going to fold it in. And now we can get the rest of the egg whites into the party. While we are folding, it is my ambition, as you may know, to bake my way through my favorite cookbook. I intend to bake all 450 recipes that are in the Cook's Illustrated Baking Book, but I need help. I need to decide which recipe I should bake next because I have a lot of options. So if you'd like to help me narrow it down, please leave a comment. Tell me either a specific recipe you want from the book or just like general category, muffins, bread, other things. Let me know. It is time to fill the cake tins. Now, two things that I really recommend, although you totally don't need them. One is this offset spatula. It's a totally great baking nerd tool that allows you to get like a really smooth top. And then that means that your cake is gonna have a nice smooth top when it comes out. And also a scale. My favorite cookbook just says to, you know, fill the two and normally you just kind of eyeball it, right? But if you weigh them, it ensures that you have nice even layers, which is what we're going for. We are up to 613 on this one, 614. I think I can get that. Oh yeah, just there. And you know what? I don't even think I can use my offset spatula. This is a really very, very liquidy, more liquidy than I was thinking about. So it's kind of already lay layered out and smooth, but still, it's a great tool. You should get one. Okay, these are going in to the oven. It says 20 to 22 minutes. Let's get them in. My oven is pretty hot, so I set it for 18. Just want to keep an eye on it because we don't want overcooked cake. Nobody does. You know, it's interesting because my favorite cookbook says 20 to 22 minutes. It's now been in for 21 and it's still very wobbly in the middle. Hmm. The tops are definitely starting to brown, a bit golden brown in fact, but obviously the middle is still completely raw. So if it continues in this way where it's just like really not baked in the middle, but the top is just starting to take on way too much color, then I'll make a little tin foil hat. But hopefully we don't get to that phase. I hope it sets up in the next two minutes. Oh, maybe. Let's talk a little bit about what just happened. So I set it for 18 minutes because I have a hot oven, even though my favorite cookbook said it's gonna take 20. At that time, the entire middle was jiggling as I pulled out the drawer, so it's like, okay, definitely not done, let's add more time. I checked it again, and I was getting some of this really golden-y color, but also the middle was still kind of jiggly. And then the next time that I checked it is when I started to hear all of this steam coming out of the cake. And that's a really good indicator that it's not done yet, but it's about to be done. So don't take it out, let all that steam kind of come out, but don't walk away because in the next minute or so it's gonna be done. It's been 10 minutes. These are still really warm, but it's time to start just cooling them out of the pan. Here's how we do this. Don't be afraid. It's hot, I'm gonna put gloves on. Cooling rack, put it over top. Flip with confidence. Pull that off. Pull this guy off. Now, we need to flip it back over kind of quickly. Put this over top. Don't squish it. And flip again. That method works really well, but I never know how to do it without involving like multiple cooling racks. 
You can also do it quite well with a completely flat plate, but all my plates have divots in it. I think you could probably also do it with a cutting board. If you try it, let me know what works for you. The cakes are almost done cooling, so it is time to make the frosting. Powdered sugar, vanilla, Dutch processed cocoa, butter, semi-sweet chocolate, corn syrup, salt, and that's it. My favorite cookbook is very specific here. It says that we need 20 tablespoons of unsalted butter at 68 degrees, which I have no idea what this is at. Well, apparently it's 75 degrees in here. Butter is at 71. So, I guess we'll put it in the fridge for a minute. I've never seen that before. You know, it usually just says softened. I mean, 71, 68. While we're waiting, we can put the rest of the ingredients into the food processor. Adding the confectioner sugar, cocoa powder, and salt. Still 71. Whatever, that's so close, right? We get, let's move on. We can't be waiting. I need cake, I need to eat cake. If it all goes wrong, this was probably the step. amazingly well. Now for the corn syrup, kind of a lot. One teaspoon of vanilla, five to 10 seconds. Shoot. I forgot I was supposed to uh, melt this. All right, let's do that right now. Should I put this in the fridge? It wants to be room temperature, so we're gonna leave this out. Quickly do what we should have done earlier. There are several ways, I think, that you can melt chocolate, but my preferred method is to do it over barely simmering water in a pot. I just feel like it's a bit safer. Chocolate is really temperamental. If you are going to do this method, you add like an inch of water to a saucepan, and then you get a larger bowl so that you make sure that the bottom of the bowl does not touch the water. You take, you know, a certain amount of chocolate. This is probably good. We'll put it over the water and then we'll add the rest to it and it melts really nicely that way. I'm using semi-sweet chocolate. The book says that you can use semi, bittersweet, or milk. And then kind of in the fine print they say that they used milk. So I'm guessing it would be best with milk, but I didn't have that. All right, all the big pieces have been melted. So I feel good. It's gonna have some carryover cooking, which basically just means it is still hot and things are gonna continue to happen. So those last remaining little pieces will melt. And then we can continue and pretend like we read the instructions ahead of time and knew what was going on during this entire process. All right, it's cool. Pro tip, if you wanted to cool down faster, take it out of the really, really hot bowl that was just over boiling water. Oh yeah, it looks good. It was kind of hard to tell while it was going if it was Combining because it's all brown, but oh, it looks really good. We're ready to decorate. What I'm going to do first is take four pieces of parchment and put them thusly. And they're not gonna stay there and it's gonna be kind of annoying. Stay. It is going to protect the plate on which you are frosting your cake. Alternatively, you could use a cake round, which is basically a piece of cardboard that goes under your cake and you can decorate it on kind of like a spinning Lazy Susan decorating wheel thingy. I have one, it's just in storage right now. Then you can go under that cake round and then transfer it to your plate and you don't have to do this, but we don't have that. And also my favorite cookbook says to do this step, so we're gonna go for it. Let me casually take one of these incredibly cool layers. Put it here. I have learned you want the parchment, of course, to be under the cake, but not so far under because it makes removing it really hard later. It says one and a half cups. I'm just gonna eyeball it, you guys. Can't be bothered. One cup. One half cup. Got my handy offset spatula, great tool. I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge because the weight of the next layer is going to kind of push it out. Now, I like a really flat topped cake, so I'm actually gonna put this upside down. You also could add in another step of trimming off the top of your cake, which honestly, if I wasn't like following the rules slash had I thought of it earlier, I probably would have done that. My favorite cookbook does not call for a crumb coat, but I think we should do one. Hmm, do I think we should do one? Maybe we don't have to do one. 
let me explain. A crumb coat is a step in cake decorating. There's still a piece of chocolate that didn't get incorporated. Take that out. Mm -hmm. A crumb coat is a step in cake decorating, which is done to keep the crumb, the little tiny pieces of cake, off of sort of the final finished layer that you look at when you look at a beautiful cake. The idea essentially is that you take frosting, work it around the sides, and all these kind of like little pieces of cake will sometimes come up. I'm sure you guys have seen this if you've been, if you've ever decorated a cake. You do a thin layer of frosting, then put it in the fridge and chill it. And then the butter that's usually in frosting will harden, like just like butter does in the fridge. And it then allows you to apply another layer of frosting over top of that. And you get this like really nice clean finish. This recipe, I'm not getting a ton of crumb on the outside. So if I start to see some pieces kind of pick up, then we'll take the time, I'll put it in the fridge, it'll chill down and then we can continue. But if we don't have to do one, that means I get to try cake sooner. Now, were I actually making this for someone's birthday or some occasion or something, I feel like I would add sprinkles. My favorite cookbook actually has a section all about cake decorating, but I'm just gonna kinda take my offset and do some sort of like season S's. peek through a little bit so I'm just kind of smoothing adding I mean this is definitely that the kind of thing that you can spend a really long time doing and also the thing I've done in panic like two minutes before we have to leave for someone's party and I said I would make their cake now I'm going to just slide these out oh yeah those came out great I'm getting a little bit of wonky edge at the bottom so I'll take my offset and just tidy it up a little bit you can sort of see that I had paper there. There you go. Really nicely decorated cake. That took us no time. Every time I bake a new recipe in my favorite cookbook, the Cook's Illustrated Baking Book, I give it a rating. That's right. I grade each of the recipes because I'm super cool that way. And now it is time for the fluffy yellow layered cake to meet its maker. Let's get this thing a grade. <laughs> review the grading system. To be extra cool, I do not use the regular grading system. Instead, I use the grading system from Harry Potter. The top grade is O for outstanding, E for exceeds expectations, A for acceptable, P for poor, D for dreadful, and T for troll. I don't feel like this cake is gonna be a T. There are no A pluses, E minuses. You need to be firm, you need to pick one grade and stick to it, it goes in the book, and that's it, there's no changing it. I mean, I don't know. I guess if we tried it like way later and <laughs> decided it was better or worse, of course we could change it, but whatever. For this scenario, I'm being incredibly strict. And to grade this cake, I need my trusty live-in taste tester. Hey, sister, hello. Hello. This is fluffy yellow layered cake. We haven't even had dinner yet. Do you like how I decorated it? I do like the texture oh. of the icing on the top. Did you consider Sprinkles or something? Yes, I talked about sprinkles. I would consider sprinkles, but it's not in the recipe. I'm not waiting for you. All right. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's what I'll say right off the bat. It's definitely not like an overly sweet cake. The yellow cake feels almost like, like almost a little dry. Like closed textured. Closed textured. Mm -hmm. Even despite the fact that it's supposed to be fluffy yellow cake. Yeah, it, I would not say that is fluffy yellow cake. Yeah. I mean, it's good. If I, I got this at someone's birthday party, I wouldn't be like, no thanks. I wouldn't be like, no thanks. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they told me that they bought it at a grocery store. Whoa. Yeah. It's it's good. Like, I'll, I'll certainly eat a lot of this cake. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a no. I would say that this is a very, yes, acceptable yellow cake. I wouldn't, like, ask for the recipe off of someone. No. But I also would probably eat the entire slice that they gave me. This tastes like the yellow cake was perhaps box. Uh huh. And then you paired it with a higher quality homemade mm. icing, which is good. Do and you like the icing the best? The icing is the best. Now, I'm saying all these terrible things about this cake, but I'm still eating it. I so. know, this is the thing, like. <laughs> it's not that bad. We're critical because yeah. it's a high standard, but 
We just ate that whole piece of cake. Yeah. And I'll eat more later. Yeah, me too. If, if you love someone who just like really likes dessert or whatever, this is like a totally acceptable intro cake. Acceptable.